Hey magicians! Today I'm going to be giving you a tour of all my custom staple mates that I've painted over my years of being a collector. But first, I would like to do a shout out. I'm making this video for Lily the Equestrian. She was my first fan here on YouTube and she's really cool and she has a really cool channel where she makes short films with her Schleich models. So if you're into model horses, you should definitely go check her out. I've linked her channel down in the description box so it'll be easy for you to find her. Okay, on to the video. First, I'm going to show you some of my oldest customs. This is Devilish Intent. He's the first custom that I ever made. And aside from some minor touch-ups, this is exactly what he looked like when I first painted him. He's just solid black with a white sock and a stripe. I'm really attached to Devil. I played with him so much that a lot of his paint got nicked off and so I had to retouch him up, but I didn't change any of the original markings. I know that he's a pretty simple color, and yes, I also know that he's on a mare mold, but I always considered him a stallion. I couldn't imagine Devil in any other color, which is why I never repainted him, and I think he's still one of my favorites. This is Eternal Anarchy. He used to be a lighter bay, but I ended up repainting him to a darker bay. He's also one of my older customs. This is Night Eternal, and she's another one of my oldest customs. I added the white socks, the stripe, and the blue eyes a little bit later. Um, she was originally just solid black, but I think that the white markings really help her stand out, and I think her blue eyes are awesome. This is Androhit, which means the bridge in Celtic. And he's gone through a few different color changes over the years, but that kind of blended gray has always been there. He's another one of my favorites. I like to think that he's a hunter jumper. This is Leonidas, and he's the same color as Eternal Anarchy, and I like to pretend that Eternal Anarchy is his father. They're both thoroughbreds, and uh, Leonidas has some very small white socks there, which I added recently. Now I'm going to move on to some of my later customs. As you may have learned from previous videos, I love my roans, so I'm going to show you them first. This is Chasing Orion. He's a very, very dark gray roan, and again, I don't think the camera's picking it up too well. I painted him dark gray first, and then I did black roaning on top. I really, really like how he turned out. He's one of my more recent customs, so I did a better job with the painting and sealing, and I think he's one of my favorite customs that I have. Here's another roan. This time it's a full. This is Constellation, and he's actually chasing Orion's son. Constellation is in the same degree of roan, but he's a little bit lighter, so I went in with a light gray coat before I did the black roaning on top. Constellation also has a big white blaze down the front of his face, and I think he's really cute. I really enjoy painting roans because you get to flick paint off your brush, and it's just so much fun. So I had really a lot of fun painting both these guys. Speaking of stallion and full sets, I have another one right here. This is Renegade Luck, and this is Norse Code, and you'll probably notice that they're pretty much exactly the same color. I know that they're not exactly roans, but I painted them using the same uh, flicking technique, and as you also may know, I love my dapple grays. This is Raging Rain, and he is one of my most recent customs. I think I painted him about two months ago, and he took forever because I did the spots first over a solid bay coat, and then I decided that I wanted him to be a bay roan, so I did the black flicking, and then I had to go back over all the spots with white paint, and it took so long. I also did some tracing on the white around his face, so there's a little bit of gray there as well. I was inspired by a really cool photo of a horse's face that I saw online, and I wanted to make a horse that had those same markings with the dark around the eyes, um, but it took a really long time to mix all the colors. But I'm really happy with how he turned out, and I also love the mold that he's in. This is the Rivet Mustang mold, and I think it's just so like action-packed and cool. So I really like Raging Rain. This is Triple Six, and she's pretty similar to Raging Rain in terms of color, except that she's not a bay roan, she's actually a fire chestnut, and she doesn't have as much roaning underneath. She's got a little bit of lighter roaning on her back, but most of it's covered up by this crazy Pentaloosa markings that she's got going on. So I actually did the, the uh, chestnut color first, and then I went back in with brown and white, and I added the markings on top just because I thought she was a little bit plain without them. I really like how she turned out. I'm not sure if it's the most realistic of coloring. I think the, the spots may be a little bit too big, but I think she looks cool anyway. Finally, this is Blue Napoleon. He's another one of my roans. He's a blue roan that I painted a while ago. And I actually used blue paint, which was probably kind of a mistake because he looks a little bit crazy. I didn't really know how to paint blue roans, um, so I think I'm going to try and repaint him as an actual blue roan with the black and white technique, but I don't really know how to do it yet, so he's going to stay blue for a while. 
Now that I've gone through my Rones, it's time to look at Pentos. The first two that we're going to look at are both etchies. This is Dreamwalker. She's actually an etchie that I made because she was a double. She started out as just a plain red roan mare, but I had another one that looked exactly like her. So I repainted her mane and tail to a darker red, and then I just etched these white markings all over her. I love roans, and I love pintos, um, so I think that she turned out as kind of a great combination of both, and I really like her. This is National Razor. And I actually made a video about etching her because she was the first etchy that I ever made. So of course she's not perfect, the etched areas are kind of rough and there are little places where the knife like slipped and so there's like some scratches around the edges there. But I still think she turned out pretty good for a first attempt and after I neatened things up with paint and put some sealant on her, I think she turned out pretty good. So I like her too. And again I etched her because she was a double of another horse that I had. This is Rain Signal, and she's another one of my recent customs. She's actually the second most recent custom that I have right now. I painted her last week, and I just kind of did her on a lark. She was also inspired by a photo of a horse that I found online. She is a Medicine Hat Pinto. As you can see, she has a black marking that covers her ears. Um, it also goes down onto her face a little bit, but most of it's hidden by her mane. And she's also a bicolor Pinto. Some of her markings are black, and some of this chestnut color, and she's also got three colors going on in her mane and tail. While I was painting her, I tried out a new technique which I'm starting to really like, which is mixing metallic paints into regular acrylics. So you can see that her brown markings especially, that I put a little bit of gold in them so they have kind of a shimmer to them and I really, really like them. And you can see it more in her mane because I didn't dilute the metallics as much. So I think she's really pretty and I like her a lot. This is my last Pinto. This is Grinning Reaper, and he was another kind of experiment because I actually painted him with enamels instead of acrylics, so you can see how shiny the black part of him is. The white is just the plastic of the model showing through, so it's not quite as shiny, but after I sealed it, things kind of tied together a little bit better. Moving on, I've now got some solid colored horses to show you. This is Deus Ex Machina. He's pretty simple, he's just a really, really dark fire chestnut. Um, you can probably tell that I like my fire chestnuts. I love dark, dark horses with bright orange manes and tails. I always think they're so pretty. So I just had to try this color out on this Mustang mold, and I think it turned out pretty cool. This is another horse on the same mold, but this time it's a buckskin. So his name is Rising Storm, and I did him as a Cremello buckskin because I like to increase the contrast so he's not as dark as your typical buckskin. Um, I can actually compare him to another buckskin that I've painted. This is Galileo Starfinder, and he's more of your typical darker, kind of brownish mouse buckskin color. He also has primitive markings, so I guess he counts as a dun more than a buckskin. But you can really see the difference here. I kind of like the Cremello buckskin more. I really like how kind of ghostly he looks, but I like both of them. This is La Donna. She's a very pinkish kind of rose gold palomino color. And I actually have a funny story about her. When I painted her the first time, I did her in the dark under a really, really bad yellowish table lamp. And then I thought I did a good job, but then when I went and looked at her the next day, I realized that she was super duper yellow, and I just hadn't been able to see how yellow I'd painted her because I was mixing the paint under that bad lamp. So I had to completely repaint her. This time she turned out a little bit pinker, but I kind of like it. I really love pink palominos, so um, I think she turned out pretty cool. This is General Gallant, and he's another horse on this cob mold that I really like. Um, so I tried to do that thing that Brayer does where they make white horses just be the white of the plastic and then they blend the shading into it, but because I don't have an airbrush it was really really hard and it took forever and it's still not perfect, but I think I did a pretty good job blending on the legs even though it did take forever. Next time I think it would be way easier just to paint the horse white first and go from there, but lesson learned, he still looks cool. This is Dark Dream. She's a very dark liver bay, so she's actually not black, she's kind of a light brown. And I made her to go with this liver bay, who's a lot darker. This is Deus Arcanum, so they're both Arabians. Deus Arcanum has some pretty, uh, pretty extensive white markings on his face and front legs. And he was kind of an experiment in paint blending. I'm not sure if the camera's seeing it, but he's also a very dark liver bay. Only his mane and tail are black. And I also painted his mane and tail with enamel paint so that it has a shinier finish and it looks kind of glossy and silky. So I used two different kinds of paint for him, and I did the same thing for Dark Dream. Although you can't see it as much because her mane and tail are pretty short. This is Play for Angel, and he's been through a lot of touch-ups and repaints. The most recent thing I did was to extend the white marking on his face and then turn this eye blue. I think having two different colored eyes really makes him look cool. 
But I've always loved these um, lighter colored horses, and I think it turned out really well on this mold. Um, interestingly enough, he's actually not a Palomino. If you look closely, you'll see that his mane and tail are darker than his body, so technically he's a Champagne. I didn't realize this when I painted him, and then when I looked it up, I'd have been calling him a Palomino, but he actually isn't. So, he was my first Champagne horse that I painted, and I really like how he turned out. Here's another Dunn. This is Excalibur, and I painted him to go with Galileo Starfinder, so they're pretty much the same thing, except that Excalibur is smaller, and he has a star instead of a blaze. This is General Alexander, and even though he's one of the oldest horses that I have, his paint job is relatively recent, because I've repainted him probably five or six times at this point. First he was a super yellow Dunn, then he was a zombie, then he was brown, then he was white, then he was a dapple gray, and then finally he went back to being a, a buckskin. Except, of course, this time he doesn't have the primitive marking, so he's not exactly a done. Okay, we're getting down to the wire here. I just have four more customs to show you. This first one here is Stolen Shadows. And so he was actually a store-bought painted briar that had a varnished roan Appaloosa on him. And I really, really loved how it looked, but he was an exact double of another horse that I had. So instead of painting over all that nice airbrushing and shading, I just added some more markings to him. So he already had black back here, but I added some more black spots fading into dark brown spots on his front, and then I also darkened his face, added some striping here, and darkened his lower legs, and I also painted his mane and tail black. So I just couldn't bear to paint over the Varnish Roan because I loved it so much, so he's technically still a Varnish Roan Appaloosa, just a different variation on the same color. Next, I have two re-sculpts to show you. This first one here is Full Circle, and she was re-sculpted from the Turning Stock Horse mold. I think I mentioned in a previous video that it's not my favorite mold, so I did try to re-sculpt it. The only thing I really did was to um, remove the neck and then uh, re-sculpt the neck so that her head is angled upward instead of turning to the side. I really like how it turned out. I think she was the first re-sculpt that I ever did, and of course I had to redo the mane as well, but the rest of the body is the same, so it wasn't too drastic. And I also had a lot of fun repainting her. She was a bunch of different colors. She got repainted a lot of times, and she finally settled on this really pale flax and dapple gray. So again, that's another flax dapple gray. She makes three. It's one of my favorite colors. I'm sorry, guys. Here's my other re-sculpt. This is Celtic Rose, and you've seen her before because I made a video on the process of how I re-sculpted her, and then I, later I posted videos of me painting her. Unfortunately, her original tail was sculpted out of air-dry clay, and it just cracked off. So, um, off camera, I had to re-sculpt a new tail for her out of epoxy, so this is a different tail. And it's also pretty heavy, so it tends to drag her back into this rearing pose, but she can still rock forward into this prance. Okay, now it's time for the very last custom in my collection. And he is actually the reason that I'm wearing gloves, because I just finished painting him about an hour ago. Here he is. He's a really, really pale champagne color. So he's got a super pale cremello coat and then a golden mane and tail. And I used that same metallic technique that I used with um, Rain Signal, so I actually mixed his coat with a bronze and gold color mixed with white, and then I used the same colors in his mane and tail. He also has really pale blue eyes, which makes him one of, I think, only three horses in my entire collection that have blue eyes. I think he turned out really, really pretty. I based him, again, off a photo of a horse that I saw online. And he's in the Peruvian Paso mold, which is actually the first horse that I have on this mold. So I wanted to make him a good one, and I really like how it turned out. But I don't have a name for him. I haven't decided what to name him yet because I literally just finished painting him. So I'm going to be brainstorming names from later. If you have any ideas, I'd love to hear them. Just go ahead and put them in the comments. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video of all my customs. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, magicians!